All of the reporters who were in the newsroom were gathered around the news desk, and two of the top people from corporate, from Scripps, um, were there. And immediately, when you see that scene, given what's happening to journalism across the country, they're not there to tell you good news. When they explained that the Rocky was for sale for a month, it would be very hard in any environment to sell a newspaper in a month. This is a newsroom, so I, I doubt I actually need to, to give you the headline. Most of you probably already know, but we're going to announce just in the next few minutes that we're going to put the Rocky Mountain News up for sale, something that would have been unthinkable just a few months ago. Uh, but I think, you know, we're suddenly finding our a time in this industry and in this economy when the unthinkable has become the commonplace, unfortunately. That was a difficult and shocking announcement. And do you know what the reaction of so many people in the newsroom was? To whip out a notebook and a pen and start taking notes. Now, a few of us were writing about it, but not all of us. But that's what we do. It's in our DNA. Uh, we've been struggling with this for probably, really struggling six, yeah, six months to a year. I was off the day that the announcement was made and, um, you know, we started out, all of us just in shock, I think, and I had wished that I had been here because we're all such a, a close-knit group. It's like a family and to be able to be with your family at a time when you're feeling like there's some kind of a loss. You guys produce an incredible product. You're the, you're the model of what a newspaper is going to need to look like in the future. Uh, we would have never, never considered this if the environment was a little bit different. So, you know, as we've gotten calls over the years, we've always just, you know, kind of turned them away. We'll have to see what happens over the next four weeks. They don't have to do this. Everybody knows the arithmetic. We get the annual reports. Several parts of their company are doing very well. The Rocky had a tough year. They decided to walk away. Uh, basically, my feeling is, is they quit on us. They quit on everybody in the newsroom. Everybody knew that the newspaper industry is having its troubles, but the actual prospect of losing something they love and losing the job that they depend on was brutal. Pick up a photo, great breakouts, smart story, smart story. Fun. I've been very proud to serve as the editor of this institution, but it's also very devastating to think that I am, you know, in charge at a time where its future is at stake and that I may be the last person to hold this post. And that is a Terrible also, the fact feeling, that CSU is and a very empty in economic, I mean, feeling I think because insane, that's what I hope is to be able to pass this chair on to the next person. I believe a newspaper is an experience and that we should think of it that way. What kind of experience are we providing people? And that experience should touch people. It should make people feel. And, and good storytelling does that, and the Rocky Mountain News is committed to good storytelling. It is central to the character and personality of this paper, and it's central to why people call the paper My Rocky. They say The Denver Post, but when they talk about the Rocky, they say My Rocky. 
We put together IWantMyRocky.com as a way for um, readers to send in their comments to us and um, and and let everybody know, you know, how the, how they feel about the Rocky Mountain News. Our response has been unbelievable. Thousands of page views. You know, it's it's an opportunity for us not just to hear back from the community, but for us to introduce to the community some of the people that work behind the scenes who don't have bylines or, you know, pictures in the, in the paper all the time. So, I mean, I'm a perfect example. Nobody knows who I am. <laughs> you know, people ask me what I'm going to do when it's all over here at the Rocky. I tell them I'm not worried. I'm going to marry a rich white man. So if one of these tickets comes comes through for us, uh, maybe that's enough that we turn this money in, we buy the paper, and we keep doing what we're doing. Actually, he won't be white. It's not such thing as white. He'll be papaya smoothie. They went around the newsroom at the first of November and said, "Don't worry, you know, it's going to say today that Scripps has layoffs, but we're not, you know." Our budget's been approved, nobody's being laid off. And I asked that question and people said, what was the answer? And I go, I have no idea what the answer was because I was so shell-shocked. Yeah, because I don't think you want to say Obama's charged to Salazar, right? That's just too wor wordy. Yeah, yeah. You don't need yeah, it. It's obvious from the, the image. Yeah. And I wonder if you should go to two lines. The Tuesday before the announcement, I ordered my 25th um, anniversary gift of being at Scripps Howard, which was a set of knives which may come in handy in a couple months or a couple weeks. And the next day I was in an hour-long training session, this complicated training session of how to do the new payroll system. So was this a shock? Oh, unbelievable shock. I mean, why would you go through this brain damage of a new payroll system if you're going to be shut down in a few weeks? I still don't know how to do my payroll. I've got to learn that too. Rocky has always faced challenges. Just to begin the paper, they had to bring the first heavy iron press here using uh, oxen and, and a cart. And today, we're serving um, content over cell phones. Reporters are filing photographs from their assignments, and they're instantly appearing on our website. There's always been an attitude of, let's embrace opportunity and let's embrace change. It's, it's the paper, you know, it's Denver, you know. The Rocky Mountain News is a terrific paper. I tell you what, if, if you take out that paper, people will not be informed anymore. And an uninformed society breeds a lot of social evils. Modern technology, people grabbing things over the internet and everything's so, going so fast, they're overlooking the simple important things, you know, like the paper. Yeah. You know, you won't miss it till it's gone. I'm an online Rocky reader. Rocky's been my homepage since I, I moved to Denver several years ago, and, and it's, it's really what keeps me in touch with the local community. You bailing out everybody else, bail out my paper. <laughs> you know, because we need that. You know, it's just, like I say, it's a part of any major city. They're the pulse of America. They're what feeds upward into those national news stories so the national news stories can pick and choose what's, what's the topic of the day. The national news is not going to come back and, and go to a, a local school board meeting and try and figure out what's going on. The national news doesn't really care. The Rocky Mountain News, the Denver Post, those are the ones that are driving the improvements in the community, really. Uh, well, if it was up to me and we only had one paper, we'd keep the Rocky, but uh, we'd be very sad. I don't know what we would do for our news source. We may go to online, to a, a paper outside of town. Uh, we may take the other paper, I don't know, but we're just very sad about it right now. 
I don't drink coffee. So my staff says that's like, you know, me drinking coffee would be like pouring gasoline on a fire trying to put it out. But I, I can't go a morning without a newspaper. Uh, and I read both newspapers every day. I've always had the rock. Never took the other paper. My first first thing to read is the, is the sports part. And I like the reporters that have been with him. I like to read Penny Parker. And there's also Griego. Do I sound like a fan of the Rockies? Well, I'm depressed because I can't believe we're letting anything slip through the cracks that we've had for 150 years. I can't believe it's even being considered not to have it. It should be uh, worked out that somebody takes it over and continues the good service that we've had. You know, what it means to the community is that by having two newspapers compete so voraciously for the news that there is a higher opportunity that when someone's, when there's corruption, when someone's doing something wrong, it's a higher probability that it will, that it will get uncovered because there's just more reporters working harder with a greater sense of urgency to uncover that. That same competition sometimes means that they uh, present as a scandal something that is really innocuous and innocent. But I think generally the, the, the vast majority of situations are improved by having two newspapers and having the Rocky Mountain News as, as part of that mix. We are experiencing the worst economic downturn at least since the Great Depression. Obviously there are challenges in the newspaper industry that 20 years ago nobody anticipated. 10 years ago we're starting to show their head. Five years ago by the time most newspapers saw it coming it's, it's pretty difficult to change the business model that quickly uh, and to adapt. The biggest challenge for newspapers today is that the internet has eroded our classified advertising base. Uh, just as that's happening, all of a sudden you have this terrible economy and all the advertisers are having to cut back. The EW Scripps Company has been committed to Denver for more than 82 years. They've owned the Rocky Mountain News for that long. So the idea that they haven't tried things and made every effort to make this newspaper successful, it just doesn't hold up. What they've really decided is these economic times and the current shape of the company do not allow them the leeway that they might have had in the past and that there would be too great a risk to the overall company that Denver would drag the company down. I mean, I started at City News Bureau in Chicago. We didn't even, I didn't even get to write. I just phoned in my stories. I called a rewrite desk. And what that taught me was you've got to report. And they had a saying that was painted on the wall there. If your mother says she loves you, check it out. And I still follow that rule. I don't think everybody blogging is following that rule. And until we tell people that's the difference, a lot more people like us are going to be sitting here telling this story. What would you do with them? What would you do with a monster truck and a rocket? If the Rocky is gone, who is going to ask the questions now? Because the blogs aren't asking them. It's difficult for other media to get to the depth. I mean, the Rocky is known for the hard-hitting, investigations for the stories that get to the bottom of the serious questions that the people who live here have. The seven silver snakes slithered slowly flop. <laughs> After the announcement, Stop. and then there was the weekend, that Sunday evening at dinner, um, I think you were at a ball game. Yeah. 
that Sunday evening at dinner, I said to them, as nonchalantly as I could, well, how are you doing? And well, we're going to school tomorrow. And by the way, the Rocky Mountain News is for sale. Should we break open our piggy banks and buy it? And was hoping that the conversation would then just sort of go on to the next thing. But our seven-year-old said, well, she was quiet for a minute. And then she looked at me and said, what happens if nobody buys it? When we put our furniture on a truck and came here, our hope would be, was well, this would be our forever newspaper. That I would get lots of gray hair and I'd be that crusty guy in the newsroom and people would say, ah, that's just leg wall, he's been here forever. But, so it's gonna be a little sad for me if it's not that way. Good morning, we won't take long, we won't answer your questions. Tomorrow will be the final edition of the Rocky Mountain News. I've tried not to think about this eventuality and it's almost impossible to imagine living with it. But I'll never regret having been part of this institution and having been able to work with the people in this newsroom and having had the opportunity to tell the stories we have and to have helped shape Colorado's understanding of itself. One thing I just want to make sure and say, it's certainly nothing you did, you all did everything right. But while you were out doing your part, the business model and the economy changed, and the Rocky became a, became a victim of that. It's absolutely devastating to think that the, this is over. I've used the, um, the kind of the analogy or whatever, where you, when you know somebody, um, like a family member or whatever is ill and is not going to do well and you know it's a matter of time and still when you get that kind of, you know, when that finality hits in or when you get the word or the call in the middle of the night that they passed away, it's that kind of a thing where, you know, you know it's coming but still doesn't make it any easier. Everywhere you go in the community these last two months, I mean, this week I was on the West Slope and talking to, you know, gas drillers and welders and people who are losing their job in the economy and they all knew about the Rocky Mountain News. Um, that story is never going to run. It's scheduled for Saturday.
I guess I would just like to say to our sources, to our readers, thanks. And I'm sorry. <laughs>